Hey, I'm Rick. And I'm Andy. And this is... Been There, Tap That. On this episode of Been There, Tap That, Rick and Andrew sit down with Paul Hadfield, owner of Spinnaker's Gastro Brew Pub and Guest Houses. This is the oldest, longest running brew pub in Canada. In Canada, yeah. It's amazing. Licensed. Licensed, yeah. 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 So yeah, and the, the hard part was the licensing, right? That was... Uh, yeah, it was, um, it was a process. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? When you're dealing with um, bureaucracy and government, it's, um, you know, so much of what we, what we do today is codified to make it easy for uh, the regulatory people to manage what they do. So um, walk into City Hall and say, hey, uh, we want to do this little brew pub thing, and they just look at you and go, yeah, we don't allow those here. And uh, so, you know, yeah, thanks for your time, and back out to the lobby and um, pre-cell phones, start plugging quarters into the machine. Uh -huh. Phone the people on council and say, like, well, what's up, how come? Like, why? And, and ultimately, it, it came back that um, a well-founded proposal from a credible group of people um, in a neighborhood that doesn't exist would probably be looked at. And so like a neighborhood pub in a neighborhood that doesn't exist because uh, the politicians wanted uh, those who moved in after the pub opened to be uh, responsible for having made the decision of living next to the pub. Mm -hmm. And it's not their problem. So that's how we ended up in this location. What we offered was an opportunity to start over and do it from scratch. Uh, so as such, we became the first purpose-built brew pub of the modern era, where we took all of these considerations um, and wrapped them all together in one building. Um, we here had to uh, create new zoning bylaws. We had to create a new area plan for Vic West. Um, in order to get past the city. Uh, the city said, we don't have time to look at what you're doing. Uh, the uh, community plan is out of date, we're too busy, it's gonna take us six months to get at it. And fortunately, I had worked for a town planning consultant and I just said, hey, give us six weeks, we'll come back and uh, we'll show you what your new plan looks like. Two things happened for me. First of all, here was this huge array of flavor that didn't exist in our marketplace. Um, and secondly, the best beer we drank, and maybe it's because it was the last beer, was the homebrew. And, and what that told me was, first of all, this is a really cool idea to drink beer with flavor. And we have the technology in the room. I need to figure out how to take this idea and bring it to reality. How do you stay relevant in the market? Is it all about just the beer? Is there other things that you may have branched off and done to, to try to? Well, I think there's lots of opportunities. And, and you know, it, it's absolutely something that we talk about. Like, it's, it's, it's OK to be the oldest, but you have to be relevant. Um, and what I think we have that others don't have um, is uh, this oversight of uh, the history of what's happened here. Let's push the frontiers. Let's, let's talk about uh, beer-wine hybrids. Um, let's blur the lines between beer and cider. Let's blur the lines between beer and wine and between beer and spirits. Um, and let's, let's bring people into beer category from spirits, from wines, from ciders and say it's okay to drink beer because if you just say you don't like beer it's just because you haven't found the right one yet so as far as pushing boundaries what do you see for the next 35 years at spinnakers what's in store for the future well that's a great question the whole craft revolution thing and yeah, where do yeah. You see so um you know having having gone through um, the renaissance of, of craft brewing and now being part of the renaissance of, of cider um, we can see that uh, craft spirits is going down the same road and so we think about the landscape and all the stuff that grows here 
And like we have um, a barrel up right now that's got blackberries and raspberries and strawberries in it. And so when we can bring all of these things in our landscape together and reimagine what beer is, what cider is, what spirits are, um, the opportunities are ridiculous. And so if you think about it, we go back into the mid 80s, beer's a beer's a beer's a beer because they all taste the same, because it's the most economical way of producing them, the big, and it's the, the big most buy. economical yeah. way of marketing and distributing them, and we dumb them all down and let the marketing guys do it, that's where the brewers make the most money. Enter us, and we disrupt that whole marketplace. And, and to us, drinkability has always been the desire to go back for the fourth pint. Or fifth. Or fifth. <laughs> <laughs> the relevancy, keeping up, you know, moving forward. I'm talking about moving forward, I mean, again, there's all these breweries that are popping up everywhere. Yeah. Do you think that there's going to be this threshold where it's saturated? No. And what do you think? Do tell, because I'm curious to know why. All the growth in the sector today is at the very small scale. And so we've got um, a guy, um, Matt Westpatrick, who um, has been brewing here for a few years. He, he, um, great guy, nice enthusiastic. He worked here for a while and a job opening came up at Phillips and he came to me one day and said, I need to go and work at Phillips because I grew up um, thinking Phillips was the be all and end all and I, I need to go and work there. And Matt phoned me, Matt Phillips phoned me and said, uh, I'm sorry, but there's this guy that works for you. Let's I don't want to poach him, but I really yeah. don't want to have this conversation. And I said, well, we got two mats. Which one are you taking? And I mean, the point is that when somebody has that kind of aspiration, you help to help them get there. Um, you have to get people to happy land. So Matt is now like two weeks ago left and he's opening up his own brewery, Whistle Boy um, in, um, in Market Square. Square. Yeah. 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 Um, and so the question is, how many of those places can there be? Mm -hmm. I have always said that a brew pub is kind of like you know, a restaurant in that, can you imagine opening a restaurant and not having a kitchen? Can you imagine opening a pub and not having a brewery? Mm -hmm. I mean, why, why would you choose? to simply farm out to someone else all the stuff that you could Do actually you make for yourself yeah. and, and, and be who you want to be. And that is so much the fun that anybody can do this. All you have to do is have passion for what you're doing um, and um, commit to trying to make great stuff. And if you do that, you're going to connect with the public. And I think you can easily just go around community and find um, things that you can do that align with what the needs are that are out there. And it's a way for us to be relevant. Um, it's a way for us to connect. Um, it's a way for us to have some fun um, and support a cause that needs to be supported in the process. And I think that that's something that, you know, we as craft can all do in our community because that is our community. We're embedded in our community. And the majors, the big guys, they can't do that. You know, part of the, the process with us became so evident when we had a fire here. And the, the way in which community rallied around us, the first, the first text message that I received after a conversation with my daughter that this place was on fire and um, we're sitting in, on a patio in a, in a restaurant in Lahaina, staring at the ocean, wondering kind of like, what the fuck? Um, a text message comes in. And, um, and I can't not give a shout out. It was from my banker at Van City. And it's like, sorry to hear, how can I help? And what really caught my attention was, 
that when CTV, CBC, Global, Check, each did their four minutes on us from out on the sidewalk, one interview caught my attention. And it was Dan Ferguson who, Dragonfly Farm, yeah. and he was here in November delivering spinach. And he's standing there saying, I just lost my market. So if you think about it, if we did not buy from 35 farmers, if we bought everything from Cisco, nobody cared. But because we buy from all of these different people, the fact that we just caught fire means that he lost his market, means I need to get back here and fix this thing because this is way bigger than us. And so this is community. And so when things go on in community, you now get to the point where um, you need to be involved. Being vetted in your community and giving back is just truly the most wonderful thing that you could ever do. Yeah. And for that, we thank you. I mean, not yeah. only do we thank Thanks. you for, for, for everything that you've done for craft thank brewing, you. but moving yeah. forward. Well, we again. were just really lucky yeah. to, you know, to, to come along at a, at a point in time when this was actually possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we were, we were really lucky in, in um, just the, that I was fortunate enough to have been trained at UBC to um, not accept a conventional solution. The, like, if you're going to do that, like, why are you here? Go study engineering. <laughs> well, the, the whole mentality of get after it and chase that and do it and don't stop until you actually achieve that, that's mm -hmm. not something that everyone can do, though. And I mean, the perseverance in getting through all the red tape and getting through all the political things to be where you are today. That's the most important thing. I mean, yeah. most, most people would have stopped maybe an eighth of the way through and just said, oh, I've had enough. This is going to go nowhere. Sort well, of push. I, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's how um, each of us, through our own individual initiative, um, creates whatever it is that we do. And we all do it in our own way. And we're all going to do it differently. Hey, I'm Rick. And I'm Andy. And I'm Paul. And we're here at Spinnaker's Brew Pub in beautiful downtown Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. And we've been there. Tap, tap that. that. Drank that. <laughs> Drank Cheers. Drank. Cheers.